All right, everyone. Welcome to Digital Conversations. I am your host, Billy Bateman, and today I am joined by the one and only Katie Dunn. How are you doing, Katie? I am great. Thanks so much for having me, Billy. I appreciate it. Yeah, excited to have you. So Katie is a demand generation manager at Rollworks. And, uh, you know, for those of you that don't know about Rollworks, I'll let Katie tell you more about it. And then, Katie, if you'd also just tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Rollworks is an account-based uh, platform which allows you to identify, engage, and measure your account-based programs. Um, so whether you're just getting started in your ABM program or you have a full-fledged ready to spend a million dollars on ABM, Rollworks is there to help you. And it's kind of a you know fit-as-you-go uh, type of solution, which I really love about it. And we have customers that range from Nick at Auditoria, who is a team of two, to Hillary at Snowflake, and she's a team of, I think, uh, 35 ABMers. So it's pretty pretty great, um, but that is Rollworks. In terms of me and myself, I am Katie, as you mentioned. I'm a San Francisco native, uh, born and raised, um, and have been in tech for the last five years. Um, and I do all things demand generation at Rollworks. So whether that's a virtual event, webinars, content syndication, um, ABM, and that I kind of have my hands in various different things here at Rollworks, which is great. Awesome. Awesome. And ABM is what we want to talk about today. So we're going to start off with first just general ABM. You guys, you know, this is what you, one of the core things you guys do there. So find out what you think about that. And then... What I really want to dig into are these micro ABM campaigns we talked about a few weeks ago and how you guys are doing that. So uh, with that, you know, let's start out with just like a small team, because I think a lot of big companies are doing ABM to whatever level of success they're having and smaller companies want to get in on this. But uh, how can a small team start to implement uh, an ABM program? Yeah. And I think, you know, the questions I get from small teams, it's like, there are so many different things that you can do with ABM, but where to start. And it really just begins with identifying your targets. I'm sure um, you have some really, really great customers that, uh, you know, are, you know, using your product today, and you want to obviously find more of those. So that's where I really recommend small teams starting is with your customer base. What do those look like? Um, and then looping in your sales team. So involving your sales team is very, very important. And then using data um, that you have available to you to create that target account list. This target account list doesn't need to be um, 8,000 like Rollworks. So we have a very large target account list. Um, it can be, you know, just a group of 100 accounts. Um, and like Billy, you said a couple of weeks ago, you have these high velocity ABA, ABE campaigns that you're running, account based engagement programs that you're running against these accounts. And it can be as small as 100 accounts that you want to, you know, spend your, uh, your budget on um, because you have, you know, other, other demand programs that you need to focus on. So um, in terms of thing, in terms of starting out small, one, got to get that target count list locked in Two, identifying the channels that you can use. And, and for us at Rollworks, it, it's a mix of various different channels, but I always recommend starting with just the, the few channels that you know that work for your business. Typically, uh, it can be advertising, direct mail is huge. I'm a huge direct mail user. Um, and then email, it can be as simple as an email campaign uh, mixed in with a direct mail. And then even once they hit your website and they fill out that form, you can have a chat bot pop up that's personalized to that account. So it can be um, as simple as that. I love it. I love it. So um, when you're just getting started, start small is what I'm hearing. Look at your customer base and and that's what, when we've started doing it, that's what we do is like, okay, what do most of our customers look like? Um, as, and we tailor it by the plan that we're trying to sell to them. And, uh, you know, we just start out with email, actually. Um, yeah. And it's from both marketing. They start out with marketing emails and then sales will start emailing and calling. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think you have to even start with 100 accounts. Like, you exactly. could start with we started out where we assign marketing assigns each sales reps, uh, each sales rep, 10 accounts. And 
and they have essentially like a three week cycle where they'll work those accounts between marketing and sales and they'll either have an open op or they'll move on and, and go to another 10 after that. So, yeah. Um, and you bring up a good point, Billy, in, in which where does your sales team get involved in, yeah. in starting an ABM, an ABM program? And, you know, a lot of what AB, like marketers and just the industry doesn't talk about is the change management that needs to happen when you're bringing on an account based program. And I love how you, give your salespeople these 10 accounts to focus their, their energy on, and then they can move on to, to another 10. And, um, you know, sometimes it starts with marketing and, and oftentimes um, you have salespeople already going after the, the big enterprises of the world, the Coca-Colas, the, the, the huge, uh, the huge enterprises. And so you can do a good mix. And I always recommend when giving these 10 accounts to, to a sales rep is you, you have like three that you know that they love and that they've been working for a while, but then you have like some quick wins, some yep. smaller, yep. smaller accounts that, you know, could, could really benefit from your, from your solution. And, um, it, it allows your, your sales team to have quick wins, which always feel good when, when they're going after those big behemoths. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Like, you know, the sales guys always are like, what's the biggest account that's going to get me the biggest commission? Like it's just where they go and you love them for it. But at the same time you mix in like, Hey, you know, like you got our big premium plan that you're trying to sell to these guys and it's going to probably take a while, but here are like five accounts that are a perfect profile for what, you know, whatever your entry level plan is, yeah. that's pretty easy to just, you know, like it may even be a one call close, depending on what you're selling, you know, and if you can get to the right person. Um, but getting them those quick wins, uh, I think, does a lot for just their psyche because sales is not an easy job. Yeah. And uh, and then for building their confidence in marketing where you're like, hey, marketing, like helped me get this account, you know, yeah, so exactly. Yeah. And, and I think that goes along with the change management. It's when you're giving your salespeople these huge accounts to go after and, it, and you over rotate on the like perfect account for your business. And it kind of leaves the salesperson like not really believing in ABM. And that's what you really want them. You, you need to have them, you know, trust the marketer and you need to have that mutual alignment around, you know, that, that list or those 10 accounts that you're going after. I, I agree. I agree. So I want to circle back to another thing that you said, um, direct mail, your big believer in direct mail. So what type of direct mail plays do you find to be really effective? Yeah, uh, a lot of them. Uh, direct mail, um, I think, is successful for us for many for many reasons. One, and I'll, I'll uh, this is the hill I, I die on. We um, as marketers love a good gift. Um, and we love giving gifts. Uh, I don't know about you, but in your personal life, I, you know, I can like picture like three or four, like top gifts I've ever gotten. And two of them happen to be a vendor because they stuck out, um, in my mind. One happens to be a barbecue grill that I got. I don't barbecue, but thought it was a really great play. Um, anyway, um, yeah, direct mail works. And, and so they're kind of, two two things that stick out in my mind one um is e-gifting and then two is physical so i'll kind of start on the e-gifting and kind of a campaign to give you an example uh that i that i've been running it's an evergreen abm campaign that we have continuously running here at rollworks and um to give a little bit of background we were noticing when our salespeople would pop someone in a sequence from our target account list, they'd go through the sequence and nothing would really happen if they finished that sequence. The, the sales team, um, you know, would follow up with them like a month, month and a half later, but we wanted to stay top of mind. And so that's where I created our Awake the Dead program. And basically yeah, okay. what it's into consideration is anyone who's been sequenced on our target account list in the last two weeks and haven't responded. So they went through a sequence and they haven't responded in two weeks. We send them an automated email that is actually coming from our SDRs, which on Sunday nights, Sunday, don't sleep on Sunday, sending emails, it actually works. The open rates are really high because if you're anything like me, I'm checking my emails on Sunday nights to get prepared for the week. Um, and this email triggers from the SDR, but it's all marketing led. And we offer them a $25 DoorDash gift card um, as they start their week. And we, we say, 
uh, you know, hey, Billy, uh, you know, X, Y, and Z here uh, from Rollworks. If you're anything like me, you're you're preparing for uh, the week ahead. I'd love to, you know, you can have dinner on me or lunch on me to start off your week. And I'd love to, to chat about uh, X, Y, and Z companies, uh, you know, account-based programs. The open rates are sky high. They're like 52%, which... Uh, if you know any uh, marketing, e email marketing stats, the typical uh, industry average is around 20%. So yeah. it's more than double, which is great. And it works. And that, that copy that I that I just said is just me uh, kind of remembering what, what I wrote a few months back. But uh, it's great. We have a lot of redeems on those and a lot of responses to our SDR team. And um, I can actually pull up kind of what we've seen, you know, since it's been running the results. Yeah, yeah. We've had nine, uh, let's see, uh, gosh, 29 opportunities created from this program. It's been running for a little under a year. And then we've had $325,000 of revenue, uh, closed one uh, revenue from this program and uh, millions uh, in influence pipelines. So it works and it's evergreen. So you don't really have to worry about it. You check in, check in on it every once in a while, making sure that things are running right, but it's a great program. One of my favorites, actually. Awesome. That, that sounds like a good play. And those results uh, speak for themselves. Yeah. So so I want to dig in on the micro ABM it is something we we talked about. And I, you know, like we have our own version of it. But you guys, you were saying, hey, we're running these micro ABM campaigns. And I really want to talk about them. So First, you know, what to you is a micro ABM campaign and, and also how'd you come up with, with the play? Yeah, um, so what is a micro ABM campaign? A micro ABM campaign is not a full-fledged um, campaign where you have various different touches at various different times. It's when you maybe are at the end of the month or at the end of the quarter and you're like, I need to reinvigorate our target account lists. We're not seeing a lot of income from them. And so uh, we run them from time to time when we see uh, areas of opportunity. And like any demand gen marketer will say, you're like, hey, you know, opportunity creation is low. What can we do to kind of, you know, reinvigorate it, like I said. So a micro ABM campaign is identifying an audience that you uh, that you can identify. So for us, uh, to give an example, we pulled a list of close lost opportunities in the last six months. Um, and we're like, hey, all of these, uh, all of these, they just said, hey, it's not the right time. But maybe six months later, it is the right time now. And we want to reinvigorate them. So we pull that list of closed one opportunities or uh, closed lost opportunities. I'm sorry. Um, push them into an email campaign. And that email campaign um, has a link to a physical direct mail piece, which uh, in June, back in June, it was an Aperol spritz kit. If you're anything like me, love a good Aperol spritz. Um, and so did the audience uh, because we had, gosh, like 50 people put in their address to get this Aperol spritz kit. So that's the engagement our salespeople needed to follow up with these target account lists and get those meetings booked. Um, I have, I have, uh, yeah, let's see it. Nine new opportunities were created in the month of June. Um, and we have f over $500,000 in potential revenue from these target accounts. So, I mean, these small micro ABM campaigns are just, you know, people that sit on your target account list who may have engaged with you previously or have been closed lost in the last six months that you can reinvigorate them. So. That is a micro ABM campaign and there's various different ways you can spin it. Yeah, no, I, I like it. It makes sense to go back to uh, closed lost opportunities that, you know, they didn't necessarily go with the competitor. They just kind of were like, Hey, we're just not going to do it right now, you know, yeah. and, uh, and revisit that because they've had interest and, and why not uh, reinvigorate it? Like you're talking yeah. about, I like it. So are you guys always doing kind of like gift plays with that. Um, yeah. Do you try any other type of things? Yeah. Like, hey, we're just going to do like a bunch of display ads yes. to these campaigns or emails. Like, what other tactics are you guys yeah, doing? Yeah, absolutely. And that's a great question. I'm happy you brought it up because I left out a key portion of the multi channel touch we used for the campaign I just talked about. So, we did have air cover uh, ads running to this saying, check your email for that gift. And that actually seemed to work really well um, with display. Rollworks luckily allows you to 
to target not only accounts, but the, the people within those accounts. Um, and so we were able to align that closed lost list with um, a list in Rollworks and run display advertising towards them. So it was email, it was display advertising, it was a uh, direct mail. We even had um, a chat bot pop up as well, just to make sure that that experience was um, cohesive. I love it, I love it. Awesome, Katie. Well, um, let me ask you one more question before we break. You know, we talked about this a little at the beginning was was change management and bringing sales in because a lot of people I've talked to that are are heavy in ABM on the marketing side. When I ask them, OK, how are you bringing in sales or how is sales utilizing this? It's very it's a real mixed bag. Like some of them are like, yes, yeah, sales is on board. Like we're really we're really locked step on this. And other people are like, if I could get those efforts on board, I would. But, you know, they for whatever reason, they're not paying attention. Um, what have you found works to get sales on board? Because, you know, it's just ABM if it's just marketing doing it. And right. it really becomes like engagement when it's when it's sales and marketing working together and the results are taken to a whole nother level. So, so what do you guys do to, to get sales on board with you guys? Because it sounds like you're working pretty well together. Yeah, we uh, lucky, luckily we have a great marketing and sales relationship and that really starts at the top. Um, I hate to say, and I think a lot of things start at the top, but with you know change like this, going from boiling the ocean to a more targeted approach takes sales, sales and marketing leadership um, to come together and say, hey, this is what we're going to do. Um, and they, these are the reasons why. Um, so it really starts there. But um, from day to day, I'm always checking in with our SDRs, seeing how things are going. Uh, so one, when we were starting out in ABM, I remember back, gosh, years ago when, you know, this was a whole new thing. And it started with getting their inputs when they feel valued and their inputs are valued. I'm sure Billy, you can understand this. Yeah. That is where, really where that relationship starts to bond. And then checking in, if you did an ABM program, raising your hand and it didn't work saying, Hey, this is, this didn't work. And this is why, and being honest, because I think, you know, just human psyche, you, you want to, to have people say, hey, this didn't go right, but this is what I'm gonna do to, to make it better. And I think a lot of the times when running new programs, you want them to work so badly that you're, you're not willing to raise your hand and say, hey, this didn't work. Um, but these are the things that uh, that I want, that you know that we need to, to fix in order for, you know, for it to be successful. And so it's just an open and honest uh, conversation day in and day out about what's working, what's not. And then, um, you know, it's not, if for a lot of marketers, it's not just all ABM. You still have your demand gen programs. And something I was yeah. going to mention, uh, you can do, you can ABMify a lot of your demand gen programs, whether that's content syndication, um, advertising, retargeting, those types of things. And what I love to do um, is send our target account list to content syndication vendors. And it's all top of funnel, but we're getting those those good leads um, to our salespeople and they're nurturing them through the cycle. And it really starts there. So there's various different things that you can do to ABMify your channels um, where your salespeople won't even notice. And then they start getting more and more leads from the target accounts. And that's why. So. And they love it. Yeah. <laughs> You're getting more leads. Yeah, so. yeah exactly. Yeah, I mean, they'll let you know if they're not getting leads for sure. So for sure. And then, you know, what's funny is we're, you know, they'll never let you know when they're not getting enough, but when you're, you're poking in and you're seeing, you're like, Hey, why didn't you follow up with this lead and, and all this. And so now we have a, a conversation around prioritization of those leads. Which ones do you go after first? Um, and which ones can, you know, sit in your queue for a little bit. So. I love it. I love it, yeah. Katie. This has been really good. I, I appreciate you sharing all of your knowledge with us. And uh, I like how you guys, you know, open communication and then starting at the top, like it seems like you're running a great uh, ABM or ABE, whatever you want to call it, campaign and program. And uh, 
and thanks for sharing this. I, I'm definitely going to take some to our team and be like, let's try this. So. Yeah, I'm happy to be a resource. Just let me know. And anyone listening today can uh, find me on LinkedIn and send me a message if you want to hear about any of the programs I talked about. Okay. All right, Katie, thank you so much. And we'll chat later. Thanks, Billy.